Okay, so first up we have Prim's algorithm, and Prim's algorithm is also referred to as basically how to grow a tree. And the nice thing about it is it has a lot of similarity to the shortest path algorithms. So you should be slightly comfortable engaging in the Prim's algorithm. It's a little bit longer to do than Kruskal's, but again, it is something that we need to know and need to be able to do. So the whole idea behind it is it treats the nodes as a single tree and it basically just keeps on adding new nodes to the spanning tree from the given graph, utilizing a rule system. So when we say it's very, very similar to the shortest path algorithm, there you chose your initial vertex and then you moved on. In this case with Prim, what you'd actually do is you choose the edge with the least weight. So you choose to find the edge that has a minimum weight and you shove that into your new graph. So remember when we did the shortest path, we were creating a new tree essentially. So we started with an initial vertex of our tree. Here we start off with not just an initial vertex of our tree, we start with an entire basically branch or, you know, if you assume that the edge is a branch. Okay, so you select an edge of minimum weight and you place it into your tree. So again, like the shortest path, you selected the initial or root vertex and you place it into your tree. So let's just write that down. Select edge of minimum weight place into tree. So it's essentially activating that edge in a way. So it would be your root and then obviously you have the edge, you have your, your next situation. Then from the vertices in the tree, in other words, from the vertices in both of the, the end vertices of that edge, you are going to look for another edge of minimum weight. So that one's now taken out of your graph. So that one's been activated. That edge has been activated. So now you look at, again, um, from the vertices of that activated edge. So in other words, you'd have activated vertices there as well. It could be the end vertices. You search for them and you look at all the edges that connect to them. So all the adjacent edges there and you select the one with the lowest weight. So from the vertices in T, so you place, remember you place that one into your tree. So now it's saying from the vertices in T, let's just write that a little bit clearer. We use, if I use the eraser in T. You look for an edge of minimum weight that uses a single vertex in T. So remember when you create an edge, you need two end vertices. So what this is basically saying, it's saying you're going to look at the vertices from your tree. So you're going to look at those activated vertices. You're going to look at the edges where only one of the vertices of those edges has been activated. In other words, you're looking at those inactive edges. And you're going to select the one that is minimum. And you're going to place that one into the tree. In other words, you're going to activate that one's edge and its end vertices. And I keep on talking about the edges being activated because it may just help you visualize a little bit better. Essentially, you're activating the vertices, but again, it just helps with the visualization of it. So you place this edge into the tree. Okay, into tree T, in case you forgot that the tree was labeled T. And then you're going to continue this. So you're going to continue this piece here until all your vertices in your graph are in the tree. Okay, so you're going to also, and what this also does is you repeat until the n minus 1 edges have been placed into the tree. Why n minus 1 edges? Well, if you think about it, remember we did this theorem. We said, hey, all trees of order n have a size n minus 1. So in other words, here, yeah, we're just making sure that we are reaching a tree. So it's, it's kind of a stopping point for us. So we repeat until n minus 1 edges have been placed in t. And again, that's just a, a stopping point utilizing the knowledge we already know about trees, where we said, hey, a tree of order n has a size n minus 1. As always the case, it is a characteristic of a tree 
it will have a if its order is in its size is in minus one so it helps us tell us when we should stop what this is also doing is it's also basically guaranteeing that our tree is going to have all the vertices from our original graph in it and again this comes from my definition of trees and the approach of everything so let's go ahead and do an example just by the way this t is your minimum spanning tree okay so let's go ahead and do an example okay so you're going to note this example exactly like the one in the notes so the process of this is again we find the edge that has a minimum weight so in this case we have cd as the edge with minimum weight so we activate c and we activate d and as you can see it's been activated because that edge is the one with minimum weight so when we talk about if we look at the activated vertices again you can consider the fact that, that edge is now already taken it's already active and you can leave it out kind of a situation so now we have c and d is now in our tree so that red there let's draw a line here this is going to be g and this side is going to be t so c and d took place next we look at all the adjacent vertices to c and the adjacent vertices to d and we look at the edges in between them and we look for the one of minimum weight so if you look at this so we're looking at c and d right and we look at the edges connected to them so c has no adjacent vertices it has no you know uh, edges connected to it so we move on to d and d in this situation you have bd and you have ad so you can look at these adjacent edges and find the one of minimum weight and that's the one that's going to be activated so in this case it is that two because two is less than three right so you're going to add that to your tree so you're going to add that to your tree and one thing i just want to do so that you remember this put the weights down because then you when you're solving for the weights of the trees it's already there and this is two uh, let's just do this in black one and two then you're going to look again at all the activated vertices in your tree and then look at all the edges connected to them so in this case you would look at c you look at d again and you look at b again c is not connected to anything it doesn't have any edges adjacent to it so let's just ignore it for a second we look at d and b so we're going to look at all the edges here that are adjacent to them in that case you have your BE, you have your BA, and you look at your DA. So again, it's everything that's active. So everything that's colored in, you have to look at the edges adjacent to them. And you have to compare them. So you have to look which one is smaller, 3, 5, or 11. You know that 3 is smaller, so you're going to activate edge DA. So you activate this edge. So now you have DA sitting there. And it has a length of three. Let's just put that in. And now you still, again, yeah, you only have three edges. You need four because you have a case of one, two, three, four, five vertices. In other words, you have an order of five. Okay, so you need the edges here. You need four of them. We're sitting on three edges right now. So this again what we mean by remember when you have a tree your order and your size okay so again we're going to look at all the vertices which are active and look at their adjacent edges but we're going to only consider the ones that haven't been activated yet so in this case it is only d and that is only connected to b so that one is five so we activate that one Okay, so we have that situation. So there on our right hand side is our minimum spanning tree using Prim's algorithm, minimum spanning tree. And it has a weight of 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5, which is 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. I just want to rewrite this a little bit neater. So that was tree T. We don't have to have brackets there. And when you look at it, it has four edges. 
which makes sense because that's when you had to stop your algorithm at n minus 1. Remember, its order was 5, so n minus 1 be 4. You have a minimum spanning tree there given by your right-hand side. It's nice in a T-shape as well. It's not always going to be in a T-shape. And it has a weight of 11. Okay, so now what's really cool about Prim's algorithm is we can also just use the weighted matrix to form the algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree, much like we did with the Moore's breadth first search. So the Moore's breadth first search, it utilizes the situation where we activated a column and we crossed out the row associated with it. We're going to follow that approach. It's just going to deviate a bit in regards to what are you going to search. So remember with the Moore's breadth first search, we did it by alphabetical order as we moved down the columns and the rows. But with Prim's, remember, we're looking for the ones with the minimum weight. So when we search, we're going to search through all the active columns at the same time, but look for the one in all the columns that has the minimum weight versus with Moore's breadth first search, we just, you know, we did it by alphabetical order. So again, I'm going to go through this as an example, but the whole process is you select a vertex and then you're going to look at the, minimum, the weights and select it based on the minimum weights. So we're going to start off by we have this weighted graph. Where does the lowest weight exist? And it exists here in this one. So we can either activate C or we can activate D. A reminder, remember that this is representing A, B, C, D, and E. And A, B, C, D, and E. So you can either activate C or D. So we go through the process. I'm going to activate D just because I want to be difficult. So I activate D and I cross out D. Okay? So it's been crossed out there. Now what I have to do is I have to look for the minimum weight in column D. So that is 1. Which means the next one that we're activating is C. So we activate C and we cross out C. So now we have in our tree, we activated D first. So D was sitting there. We looked at the column of D and we found its minimum weight. And we said, oh, sweet, that is C, so now that is in our tree there with weight 1. Now we have both C and D active. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look for the minimum number in row C in column C or column D that hasn't been crossed out. So in this case, it's 2. Okay, so we're going to activate B and cross out B. So we know it's connected to D, so we have this situation here. B with 2. Now we look in B, C, D for the lowest number and we activate that one. So you'll notice you have 11 and 5 in B but you have 3 in D. So you select that one, that 3, you activate A and you cross out A. So again you have this situation here. Right. Then next up, you look in all the um, activated columns for the lowest number. So in this case, so again, here, here it's not in order. You just look for the lowest number. The only one you have in this case is 5. But, you know, work with me out. So you have 5, so you're going to activate E. But you're going to cross out E. And the moment you've crossed out everything and all your columns are active, you sorted. So just remember here, you have E, and that is 5. So let's just do this. The weight of the tree is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. So you have 5 plus 5, that's 11. So the weight of the tree is 11. There you have your tree sitting over there by utilizing the matrix method for Prim's algorithm. Okay, let's just do one more example using the weighted matrix to find utilizing Prim's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. So again, we know that every vertice C is represented by a row and column. So let's just put down A, B, C, D, E, F. Again, it could be V1, V2, V3, etc. You can label them as you choose. E, D, E, F. And we're going to try and find the minimum spanning tree. So we're going to look in our graph and we're going to be like, where is minimum weighted edges? And in this case, we can either choose when you look at this, you could choose D, you could choose E, or you could choose A. I'm going to choose D purely because D shows up um, one twice. 
but you could go ahead and choose A or E and you should end up getting the same minimum spanning tree anyway. So you, what you do is you activate D and you cross out D. So now D is sitting in your tree there. Then you're going to look which in your column of D you're going to find a minimum number and you're going to select the minimum number and go from there. And in this case you have choice so you can either go to a or you can go to e it's not going to be a huge difference but i would just choose it by alphabet just so that you remember all your other algorithms go by alphabet so go with it so you go and activate a so you activate a and when you activate a you cross out a now you're going to look at both the activated columns for the minimum number so in this case well, now the one can come up again and you'll activate that E situation. So you'll activate E. And don't forget to cross out E now. Now you're going to look at A, D and E, all the active columns, for a minimum number. So in this case, it is going to be 3. So you're going to activate B. Okay, so you activate B and you cross out the row B, I did it in the opposite order when I did it when I was writing. Okay, so now you're going to look at all your active columns again, and you're going to look for the minimum number. So you would have noticed that D and E had both three numbers, and I just went straight for E's three. Again, it's, it's not a huge deal because now I will look again and be like, oh well, there's another three, and I'll put that one down. So from D to F. And we have three, so we activate F and we cross out F. Okay, then we're going to again go through all the active columns, so all the highlighted columns, to look for the lowest number. So in this case, the only thing we really have left is this 11 connected to E. So we have C, which is 11. We cross that out and we activate C. And now all our columns are activated, all our rows are crossed out, so we are finished. So with the matrix E1, remember, when you follow this approach, you don't have to count the number of edges because it's going to automatically be done by the fact that if all your columns are finished and all your rows are crossed out, you're done. You have all your vertices in your graph, so you have a minimum spanning tree. So what is the weight of this minimum spanning tree? So it is 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 11. So 3 plus 3 is 6, 11 plus 6 is 17, 18, 19. So we have a minimum spanning tree with a weight of 19 using Prim's algorithm. So again, this example showed you what happens if you have two of the same number. You can do it via alphabetical order, and even if you didn't do it via alphabetical order like I did in the second piece, you will still end up getting because you're searching through all the columns, you will end up still getting the same tree.